Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vaga Maradian up on Capitol Hill at the conclusion of a Mitchell Institute for Aerospace Studies panel discussion on fifth generation stealth. And we're honored to have with us uh, Major Andrew Punk Stoley, who uh, is a Mitchell fellow right now. He's in Washington, D.C., but you were at uh, Nellis at the schoolhouse. You were the chief uh, F-22 weapons uh, instructor. Uh, first thing I wanted to ask you was, you know, that, that intellectual transition, you know, you got a lot of guys who are coming into the pipeline, obviously from fourth generation aircraft um, what are what are some of the you know and, and they've got you know hundreds if not you know uh, 1200 1500 hours in an existing type of airplane as they transition to a completely different uh, not just in the performance of the aircraft as we as we heard uh, chip uh, Burke uh, and and cap gun uh, talk about it you know what what are, what are some of the intellectual ways that folks have to completely change to get the most out of the f-22 out of the training cycle you're putting them through yeah, so what I would say is, uh, first off, we've actually shifted a lot to getting a lot of uh, straight out of the pipeline of pilot training straight to an F-22, which has been very healthy and uh, continues to, we continue to build in that uh, fashion in our community. And that has been uh, great to watch and uh, see evolve over time. What we are, the biggest leap that you have to uh, take with as you move from a uh, fourth generation fighter to a fifth generation fighter is understanding that you are changing where you are placing your thought processes and your attention at different times. So where before you may have spent a lot of time working about, uh, worrying about where you were placing your radar, exactly uh, what's going on with the different switch actuations you're making to make that sensor work, now you can think more about where are you putting yourself in relationship to the battle space, how are you managing the information coming into you, and then how and when is the right time to apply effects either kinetically or not kinetically from your platform uh, at the, uh, to enhance the entire capabilities of your side. So um, it, it, it's very easy to actually adapt to coming from a guy that uh, did that at a later stage of his career. Um, and it's also great to see the people that don't have any of that baggage, if you will, uh, come right in and pick it up very quickly and know that where you bring an extra capability that is a generation ahead from a prior fighter. Um, one of the things that fighter pilots always tell you is, um, you know, um, task management is actually the biggest skill as much as it is anything else. You know, when you have to do things, um, staying on top of all the capabilities an airplane is bringing you. And this airplane is completely different. It's sniffing the air. It's doing a whole bunch of things uh, with the data that's coming in in order to convert it and present it to you as information. How does that change how you need to think about operating the weapon system? Well, your thought process and how you... D divide your attention throughout an entire sortie is drastically different than what I did before in a fourth generation fighter um, in terms of what I have the capability to now choose to look at as opposed to before where I had to look at certain things at certain times because I, if I didn't, I would be in a very bad spot and likely uh, die. So now I can now choose to look at things at different times or look at information in a different way that can put me in a place where I am thinking more about where do I place my aircraft when is the right time to execute something versus I have to do this now because if I don't, there's no other option available to me. Um, sorry, I think this about answers it for you. <laughs> Does, um, one of the things that's always said, you know, on the F-35 side, obviously is designed uh, not to be the sort of lone wolf a little bit that became the, F the F-22. Uh, it has a capability to talk to one another, but not really the ability to share its data uh, necessarily as, as broadly. Um, what, what are some ways you guys have developed to be able to communicate with fourth gen and other force package elements uh, in a secure fashion, but um, you know, it, 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 as effectively as you, as you can instead of chattering 24 hours a day. Gotcha. So the, uh, I would say that the, the key piece of information sharing that's happening is happening within the formation of fifth generation fighters. So within your four ship of F-22s or within your four ship of F-35s. And that's why that's our basic fighting element. Um, it's built that we built the system around that capability. It provides the most flexibility and adaptability in tactics as you go forward. So we start with that where we are now all seeing the same picture across our basic fighting element of a four ship uh, formation of fighters. From there, now expanding outside of your formation to other people, the F-35 has the ability to transmit on Link-16, which is coalition friendly, uh, and it's the best way to get information out right now uh, to everybody else, whereas the F-22 cannot. So we have had to rely mostly on communications, and what that means is we have also had to train in ways to understand com communication discipline in uh, to prevent an overload of information to other people or prevent missed information that somebody else should have been talking about in priority. So we have we train to this often. We uh, try to 
start as a very young age of thinking through this and going through the com communication priorities so that at the right time, we are able to provide the right answer at, uh, on the radio to who needs to hear it or put ourselves in a position so that we can alleviate a task from somebody else and take care of it and then just communicate to them that we've got it. How do how um, you know in in that kind of an environment? I mean, obviously, one of the things that everybody's talking about is in an MCON controlled environment that you know in the future access to whether space or data or other systems is going to be compromised either because of jamming or because of of, of space strike and a bunch of other things. Um, as that generation that started experimenting, I remember uh, Mike Hostage when he was at Air Combat Command, Hawk Carlisle, uh, the current commander, have been working on figuring out. How can the Air Force, uh, as part of an entire military-wide plan, get back to an emission-controlled environment? From that standpoint, um, what is that kind of a restriction? Um, how, how does that potentially hamstring, or what challenges does that present an integrated kind of aircraft like this that is drawing off of so many different platforms in order to be as effective as it is? Well, it's uh, choosing the right um, you know, soup for the day is the way I kind of think about it, right? So some days you may want a spicy soup, some days you may want a super bland tomato uh, to go with your crackers, right? So um, depending on the environment and the situation and what you're tasked with, that will then dictate how you're going to choose which things that you want to communicate with and which ones you don't. Um, it, the important piece is to be have the flexibility and adaptability to choose your selection that you want. Uh, and that's currently a, a capability that we have and what we're continuing to look to expand is the ability to be able to choose more things while still keeping my same bland chili going. So uh, it's definitely a good way to look forward in the future and uh, I'm looking forward to what comes out of their studies. Major, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Hope you guys had a great time. Nice to meet you.